can choose to get up on that first alarm clock and not hit snooze. That's a, that's a choice and that's one of the, the, the quickest way that you can affect the entire rest of your day is by making the first decision the right one. Some people like to say that you should always take action just almost immediately and not necessarily plan as much. And then there's other people that say you should really take some time to like stretch and like and be very thorough in your planning. What, when do you think it's right to do either one of those? It depends. Yes, the weight of the decision and the weight of the implications of making that decision play a huge role in how much thought should go into before acting. But, you know, sometimes you can follow your gut. Like sometimes like you just know, like something needs to be done and you're like, I know what to do, I'm gonna do it. In that scenario, taking days, weeks, and geez, sometimes months to like think of every possible angle and backup plans and if this doesn't work and then that could be detrimental to just going all in and, and attacking with what your gut was telling you to do at that time. Um, and a lot of that, a lot of the times what I found is people that are faced with a decision and they know the decision that they need to make, but they want to really, really feel confident. So they think about all these different things that could happen. Okay, if I take, make this decision, this could result in this, which would then possibly result in that. They start thinking through all that stuff. If I make this decision, you know, what if this happens? Then they start thinking about how they would handle that. And that literally is, is using your brain, your capacity to think about things that haven't even yet happened, that may not happen. So I think it's so important to focus on facts and to focus on like the present, like now, and to not worry so much about the things that could happen along the way as you venture down that road, but more just knowing like, is this the right place for me to spend my time? Like, is this the right decision for me to make right now? The whole paralysis of analysis, like you can get to where you can think about it so much that you never end up actually doing the thing that you know you're supposed to do. Um, that being said, there's plenty of decisions that need to be thought out because of the implications. A lot of people may be being involved uh, other than yourself needing to, you know, gain, you know, feedback and, and knowledge and feelings from them before just jumping into something that, you know, would ultimately affect them as well. Um, especially I'm thinking about like with family, you know, making a decision to, you know, I feel like my gut instinct is telling me I need to leave my job and go do this. Well, you should probably talk to your family about that, you know, and you should probably think about like what's going to happen in the meantime, what it's going to look like to go into that new career. You know, there's plenty of examples of where it does make sense and it is the right thing to sit back and kind of take a holistic approach of looking at all the possible scenarios. But again, that comes down to like the weight of that thing. I would say in an average day, the decisions that people face, they can make a decision and act on it without the massive, massive thought process going into it. And that's where most people that are gonna be watching this are probably in that space of not like this life-changing decision that they're gonna make. It's like in the, am I going to do this or that? Well, what's going to happen if I do this? Let's play out. Let's play that out and see what that looks like a week from now, a month from now, a year from now. And let's think through all this stuff. It's like no, just choose. Like which, which is more in line with with what you're supposed to be doing, with your passion, with with your gifts, and and just go all in. Now the big thing that you mentioned with having a plan B, um, what we found like with our agents that work with us with our insurance company. Um, there's something to be said for a person that does not have a contingency plan. A person that's maybe back is up against the wall. Like there's something to be said for someone that's going after something where it has to work versus someone that if it doesn't work out, well, they'll be all right. They've got, you know, this plan B that they can always fall back to, or they can always go back to doing what they were doing before. But I've seen that play out so many times to where having those contingency plans hurt 
their execution of what they were going after. But when it like has to work, like when you go all in on something and you feel like, you know, if, if this doesn't work, like it's bad, you're gonna put so much more into that to make it work. Um, so in that regard, which is a very completely different scenario, but I wanted to mention that because there are a lot of people that are so focused on creating a plan B and creating a contingency plan if this thing that they're going after, after doesn't work. And think about what that does to your mindset. It's like, I'm gonna go after this and I want it to work, but I so, like, I don't believe in myself so much that I need to make sure I have a contingency plan. I need to make sure that when this fails, I have something else to fall back on. It's like, it's like literally just compiling evidence against your ability to do what you say you're, you're gonna do. And that to me is just, is, is a disaster. Like that's a recipe for disaster to go into something already thinking of the ways out, yeah. you know? Um, well, that's just fear. Yeah. I mean, it's scary sure. to put all your eggs in one basket. It is. Yeah. It is, but I think if you got the right basket, <laughs> right basket, that you know, it's worth going all in on.